My name is Megan Jean, and this lecture is designed to give you an overview of the epidemiology of Ebola virus disease. Ebola virus disease is a life-threatening illness caused by the Ebola virus. It's important to remember that, as with any outbreak, the situation changes rapidly, and the information that I'm presenting here is accurate as of today's date, December 15th, 2015. So in December 2013, uh, a two-year-old toddler died in a rural village in Guinea, sparking the largest Ebola outbreak the world has ever known. The outbreak primarily involves three countries in Western Africa, Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia, although there have been additional cases and deaths reported in other countries. So to date, these countries altogether have had more than 28,000 individuals sick with Ebola, and over 11,000 have died. So to help you understand the current outbreak, I think it's helpful to talk about how Ebola spreads in its natural environment. These guys up here are thought to be one of the culprits. These are fruit bats. Uh, and fruit bats actually get sick with Ebola. So when they get sick, they spread Ebola to other members of their bat community. And this bat community then becomes what we call a natural reservoir. And it would be okay if the virus, and it would be okay if the virus stayed in this bat community. However, um, unfortunately, every once in a while, a bat infects a human. This could happen a few ways. Maybe an individual sees a sick or dead bat in their yard, and they pick it up. Um, they might get blood or stool from the bat on their hands. Then, if they have a cut on their arm or the hand, um, the blood can get into their body through the wound, or their hand can go up to their mouth, or they can touch or rub their eyes. So this is how we think a person might get sick. And in an outbreak, we can um, call the first person a index case. We have a special name for this person. They're the first person ill in the outbreak. Now, if this person were to become infected today, they wouldn't start feeling sick today. Their first symptoms are going to happen in a few days, all the way up to a few weeks. And their first symptoms are going to be a bit vague. They might feel a little bit feverish, or they might have a headache. Um, people might think that they have the flu, and they probably would not seek medical care right away. So as they're feeling ill, the virus um, begins spreading through their body and getting into tissues. And it can cause lots and lots of problems. So if the virus gets to their stomach, um, they can have vomiting and diarrhea. If it goes to their lungs, they're going to have um, trouble breathing. They also can get swelling of the brain and bleeding of the mouth. So at this point, they may go seek care, um, seek the care of a physician. And so when they go to see their physician, they're getting what we call supportive care. Uh, if they're dehydrated, they might get IV fluids. If they're having trouble breathing, they might get oxygen. There is currently no anti-Ebola medication that targets the virus. Researchers are actively working on treatments and vaccines, but nothing has been proven definitively to help. And the other scary thing about Ebola is even with this supportive care, what we're seeing is that the average fatality rate is about 50%. So for every two people infected, one will die. And this is why the world has been intently watching and helping to make sure that we get this outbreak under control. So now that we have our first index case infected, how does this person transmit the virus to another person? 
The easy answer is that it spreads through bodily fluids. Bodily fluids include everything from blood to stool to vomit. Blood is the big one. It's highly, highly infectious. There's an interesting study recently that showed that one drop of blood from a monkey um, contained one million Ebola virus particles, enough to infect a million monkeys. So you can see how easy it is to get a drop of blood on your hands if you're caring for a sick friend or family members. And remember, just getting a drop of blood on your hands is not enough to get sick. The virus needs to gain entry through a cut or wound or having an infected person um, touch their mouth or rub their eyes. It's important to note that um, Ebola is not spread through casual contact like a hug or a handshake. A lot of people also ask the question, is it airborne? And the quick answer is that no, it's not airborne in the way that other diseases like measles are airborne. Um, you can't get it by breathing the same air as someone who is sick. One thing that I should mention is that you can get the virus if someone who's ill coughs and those droplets land on a surface like a table and then someone else touches those droplets and then the virus then gains entry to the body. So scientists believe that the virus can survive um, on a surface like this from days to weeks. This is important because it means that if someone who is ill was in a room or a clinic, you need to decontaminate that room. So you learned in Dr. Chao Puente's lecture about the basic reproduction number, or r naught, And this number is the number of secondary cases produced by a single typical infection. And it's a very important number for infectious disease epidemiology. So let's take a quick look at the basic reproduction number uh, for no a number of infectious diseases. Influenza uh, or flu is right around 2. HIV, uh, the r naught value is 3. Smallpox is a 6. Pertussis is a 12, and measles is a 15. So this means for every one person with measles, they're likely to give that infection to 15 other people. So Ebola, believe it or not, uh, scientists estimate that the r naught for Ebola is about 1.5. So for every person sick with Ebola, they're likely to spread that infection to one and a half um, other people. So all of this knowledge about the epidemiology of Ebola, uh, the way it spreads and how infectious it is, translates into um, how public health officials respond to the outbreak. So in the case of Ebola, to prevent the spread of the disease, we need to first find individuals who are sick and isolate them to make sure that they're not translating the disease to others. Um, an important thing to mention is that while previous Ebola outbreaks were generally limited to rural villages, the 2014 outbreak um, quickly moved into more densely populated areas where there's increased opportunity for sick individuals to come in contact with other individuals. And so this makes it extremely challenging to track down and isolate every person who's infected. The second thing that we need to do is to make sure that all caretakers are wearing protective clothing. So caretakers need gloves to protect their hands from getting drops of blood. 
They need gowns to keep all of their wounds um, covered up. They need um, mask and goggles to protect their hand, uh, mouth and their eyes. And it's important to remember that not just healthcare workers um, need this protective equipment. Funeral directors and anyone handling dead bodies also needs to protect it. Uh, lab workers who are handling specimens and families who are taking care of sick loved ones. And so using these methods, widespread transmission of Ebola in West African has been largely controlled.